Praise God. Well, if y'all, <clears throat> well, I thought I would give a few minutes here for give people time to log on to our Facebook broadcast this evening. Um, I hope everyone, I hope this finds everyone doing it. Doing well, being blessed in the things of the Lord, and uh, we'll just give it a few minutes here, give people a little bit of time to get on. <laughs> See, Brother Ray Weaver just got on after Brother McGowan. I appreciate seeing your name, Brother Weaver. We sure have missed you at church. I know you've been... Uh, not able to come lately, but we've sure missed you. <clears throat> um, Sister Janique, I thought just to, Sister Janique, I thought you had to go out of town on your job. Maybe you're still out of town, but you know, with the technology we have today, you can you can be present on these kind of meetings from ten buck two. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I thought I might uh, say some things tonight. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to mention a little bit. Uh, I have mentioned before um, concerning iniquity. Um, and it might, it might surprise you just a little bit because we have so many times used iniquity, you know, just as men who work out of order or work against the order of God or work against the ministry or have a rebellious spirit or whatever. But I want to read you this scripture. I, I, this scripture right here has helped me a lot on concerning iniquity along with others. But... Um, in Psalms 119 and 1, it said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. You know, uh, Revelations of 12 chapter talking about those early church saints that overcame, it said they overcame by the word of their testimony. And I've used that many times to show people that you and I, our, our testimony is our testimony. It's nobody else's testimony. What, what I'm going through, where God's developing, what he's developing in my life to make me his workmanship is altogether different than what he's working in your life. However, it is akin, akin to what he's doing in my life in this way, that he's making us righteous. He's making us more like the Lord. Uh, I said the other day in Bible study in the church, I said, God is not like a big boss that just wants everybody to do his will just so he can rule their lives. That's not God at all. God just wants us to be righteous in all that we do. He wants us to learn righteousness and to, uh, to be established in, in right doing in all that we do. And, uh, just like he is, just like he's righteous, just like uh, Jesus, when he said, I always do the will of my father, um, I think there was I think there was latitude in that. Hold on just a minute. I got a dog barking here. That... They argue over the dog food. And I, I just have to pick it up to keep them from arguing who's going to get it. <clears throat> the last part, it's always, they've been fed, they're not hungry, they just like to fight. Anyway, excuse me for that, but <clears throat> uh, 
Anyway, as I was saying, we all uh, we all have our own testimonies. We're all I've used it like, you know, we all have our own um, our own fingerprint. We have our own iris, which is different from anyone else's, which makes us an individual. That God created us as individuals, and together as a corporate group, we make up a whole of God's purpose and what God is having us do uh, as individuals working righteousness in our gifts and our talents. And so none of us are exactly alike, but as God develops his righteousness in us, uh, we won't, we're not gonna be like all of us just alike. We're still gonna be very much individuals and, um, um, you know, so God's not interested in making us do exactly what, uh, exactly like being a big boss that you're going to do it my way or no way. He wants us to have our own gifts and our own talents, our own mindset. He just wants it all to operate in righteousness. And you and I are not going to, you know, your mind your mind is the avenue of your behavior. You know, whether it's, if, if your mind is a carnal mind, it's the avenue of the, of the behavior of the Adamic nature of man. But as your mind is renewed and changed and becomes more uh, spiritual and more righteous in your thinking, then eventually the Adamic nature won't have any place to behave because it won't have a mind or a vehicle to manifest. And so eventually it finally uh, ceases to exist. And uh, finally the new nature does everything. The mind uh, being renewed in righteousness does everything right. Until we get there, let me let me read a little further. Or, uh, uh, we're keeping his testimonies. In other words, uh, the things that uh, transpired in Christ's life that caused him to find complete righteousness and overcoming uh, man's nature. Uh, that That's what we're having to learn is, is how to follow the example of Christ. Verse three here says, they always do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. So, <clears throat> Uh, that tells me, look at the indication there that if you walk in the Lord's ways, you're not doing iniquity. If you walk in your way, you're doing iniquity. So iniquity, I would say in general, in a general sense, is doing your own will. Uh, the will of the flesh. If you're not walking in the ways of the Lord and you're walking in in the ways of the flesh, then that's, that is iniquity. That's, that is perverseness. It's not just working uh, deliberately. And, and you have to include iniquity as far as working deliberately against the order of God or against the uh, ministry of God. But that's just a, a, that, that's just a part of iniquity. That just identifies one working of iniquity. Well, iniquity is the whole piece of the pie of iniquity is walking in the ways of the flesh. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I have a little bit of sinus drainage tonight. But <clears throat> uh, so, you know, now let's go back to the 32nd chapter of, of Psalms. Um, I may just cover a little bit about this. I may cover the whole chapter before it's over, but but let's start in verse one. It says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Didn't say that it's done away with, just said it's covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there's no guile. Uh, Blessed is the man who the Lord imputeth not 
iniquity. In other words, he doesn't count uh, the sin of iniquity. It's covered. Your sins are covered. By the way, if you do look up the word iniquity, it does it it is it includes it includes punishment, it includes judgment, it it includes uh what I said perverseness, wrongdoing. Uh, so right, let me look right here. I can, let me look at the uh the Hebrew word for iniquity is revolt, moral, or religious, rebellion, sin, transgression, trespass. Um, it does it does include punishment for the transgression. In other words, here, uh, you know, uh, we bear the iniquity of our fathers, the scripture says. Uh, Noah's son bore the iniquity of his father. Uh, <clears throat> our sins, uh, there is punishment uh, and perverseness that's included. The reason for the punishment is the perverseness that's in sin of our forefathers. Several years ago, Brother Billy Brown in Houston, um, he uh, got up at the campground and he talked to us about the him feeling the need for us to repent of the sins of our fathers, uh, or the and the iniquity uh, that was sown by our fathers that that we like for an example Noah's son bore the iniquity of his father, the judgment, you see God. Uh, Exodus tells us that uh, the Lord visits the sins of the fathers of, unto the th third and even the fourth generation. I've explained that this way, that uh, you're in the natural, I'll just use myself as an example, uh, I have a son and uh, my son has, a, he has three children, but let's just take one of his sons. And then his son has a son. Okay, I, I'm a generation. My son's a second generation. My grand, my, that which is uh, my grandson, my son's son, that's a third generation. And then my great, great grandson is a fourth generation. And Whatever I have planted in my son that he hasn't been able to correct, if God hadn't helped him to correct it, if I planted wrong things in him, God has to visit my sins and my iniquity. The judgment of my sins will be visited on my son because it's planted in him and he's doing it. Then the third generation, my grandson, you see, after I pass away, uh, there's not too many people that has a great, great that has enough relationship if they are alive. Uh, I can remember, you know, my, I can remember my, I can't remember a great, great grandmother or father, but I remember my greats, uh, <clears throat> which would have been my father. I mean, I mean, to see my great, my grandfather, my father, and me. That's the fourth generation. I didn't. I wasn't influenced too much by my great, great, uh, by my great grandparents. Really, only had one great grandparent, and and they were old, and I didn't have too much relationship with them, so they didn't have too much influence over me. But and then after she died, she didn't have, of course, any influence over me. But. I, had, I was influenced greatly by my grandfathers and, and my grandmothers. They, they, they didn't carry as much weight with me as my father, but, but they carried weight in that I knew that they were superior in the natural, in the natural order of our family than even my father. 
I knew they were my father's father and, and my father honored that. And, uh, but the things that they done wrong, they planted some things in me and God had to visit that on me, the fourth generation. And, and of course he had to visit it on, on my father and he had to visit my, then, then what my father planted in me had to visit on me and then it went on down. But after about four generations, that influence removes and it, but it's continued on for three to four generations continually. And so uh, I've used this before and told them, I've said it this way. I said, one time I was uh, talking to the Lord. I, I used to have a farm and uh, I was out working on the farm by myself. And I, I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I remember I had done something, you know, growing up, there were things about my father that I felt like was wrong. And I vowed that I would never do that. that I'm not going to have that in my life. But as I grew as an adult, I kept catching myself doing some of the things that I said that I hated that my father did. I mean, I love my father, but there were things I would just, I was just a natural person. I realized that my father had faults and I didn't want those faults. Some of them that I, that aggravated me or, or went, were troublesome to me. I wanted them, I didn't want them in my life. And so whatever it was I'd done, I, I was speaking to the Lord. I was just praying, walking, doing whatever I was doing on the farm. And I said, Lord, why? Why I hate this? Why do I keep doing this when I, I hated it in my father and I wanted, I, I vowed I'd never do it, but I can't seem to stop myself from whatever it was. And the Lord spoke to me that day and the Lord said this to me. He said, the reason you do that is because your father planted it in you. And the reason he planted it in you is because he didn't have the knowledge of how to get it out of his life. And you, don't have the knowledge how to get it out of your life and you're not going to get it out of your life until you learn and gain enough knowledge and understanding to get that out of your life. And I begin to pray and ask God to help me and to help get these things corrected out of my life. I, I'm sure I had already planted some of it in my son <clears throat> and it, my iniquity was going to get uh, visited on my son and the judgment that I was suffering. See, you may not realize it or not, but you do suffer some judgment for the iniquity. It's just, you sow, you reap what you sow and, and God doesn't remove that law of reaping and sowing. However, he may cover it. He may not, he may not hold it against you. Let's read a little bit more here in, uh, in the 32nd chapter, let's read the second verse again. It said, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and whose spirit there is no guile. Now that word guile means deceit and falsehood. See, as long as you won't face yourself, as long as you won't admit you've got faults, as long as your mind is closed to accepting your faults, then you do have guile. That's false. That's falsehood. It's guile. It's deceit. You may deceive your own self, but once you get in a place where you seek righteousness, uh, uh, so uh, then verse three says, "When I keep silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all the day long." For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned to draught of the summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee and, and mine iniquity, and I have not uh, have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Let's go back a little bit. I kept silent. When I kept silence, my bones, in other words, see, when God starts dealing with you, you start wrestling with inside yourself and day and night, your hands heavy on me and your moisture's 
In other words, it's like a drought, he's saying. Uh, and you're wanting some kind of relief from God's dealing with you and you're recognizing your, your undone condition. And then he said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord and thou forgavest me the iniquity of my sin. Uh, that's what he said before. Blessed is the man who the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Well, uh, if you if you look in the, in the fourth chapter of Romans, where Paul begins to talk about Abraham, and because of faith, let me read 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 this to you in the fourth chapter of, of Romans, the first verse. It says, "What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found?" For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. For what saith the scripture, this is verse three, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteous, righteousness. Now to him that worketh, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that, that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Now let's let's talk about that just a little bit. See, in other words, you're you're not all together. Uh, you didn't got rid of all your sins yet. I haven't got rid of all of mine. I hate to admit that, but I'm just I'm just being honest. There would be guile in me if I didn't admit that. I'd be deceiving myself and trying to deceive others. I'm working on it, uh, but, <clears throat> um, and the Lord's working in me, but I, I can't be something that I'm not. See, God, I can't move ahead of God. If I tried to get up, if I tried to get off of the foundation I'm on that God's really got me on. In other words, if you really know where you're at in God, then you're on a sure foundation. But if you try to be something you're really not, you try to be, you know, you try to pretend or act like you're more, you've got more accomplished in righteousness than what you really have, you've got a false foundation and you are going to come down off that foundation. You're not going to, you're not going to stand on a, on, in a, on a foundation that's not true, it's not sure. That's guile in your life to do something like that. So uh, learning how to have, uh, learning how to be who we really are with recognizing the need that we need to go further. We need, we need, to, we need to continue to strive to serve God. You know, I'm not giving you a crutch to do wrong. I'm just telling you, you got to recognize where you're at in God and you've got to not try to live above where you're at, but you've got to be content that God's brought you as far as you are and that you're continuing in your walk with God, but you're not um, blind to, to you, the fact that you, you've got faults and you've got needs that you're, you're still trying to overcome. God's working that in you. See, so some of the things we're doing, uh, I've stated this before as far as uh, a law. Let's, I mean, I mean, just talk to you a little bit about that. See, it's necessary for you to have commandments. When you come to God, it's necessary for someone to begin to show you what is righteous and what's not, and for you to have certain commandments 
that you're obedient to. You wouldn't have to be obedient to it if it was already part of your character. So that's a commandment of the obedience to righteous working in your life, but eventually that's to actually become a part of your character and you don't have to be obedient. It's just who you are. You just do what's right. And so... <clears throat> Uh, uh, the Lord, he, you know, in other words, but my point in that is, is that keeping that commandment does not make you righteous. It makes you working righteousness. It makes you practicing and following the example of righteousness, but it doesn't make you righteous. See, if you, uh, if you have to have somebody tell you how to dress or have to have someone tell you what not to do because it's sin, then you don't have that established in your character that it's part, that righteousness that you're trying to, to control your flesh. See, once you've defeated it or overcome it, you don't have to try. You don't have to be obedient to something that is, part of your character. God's not obedient to, to, to do right. He just is right. He's just right in all that he does. And that's what he wants to develop in you and I. So just keeping a law would never make you an overcomer or perfect. It has to become a part of you. And this is a marvelous work of God. That, that, and only God can work this work in us. We're not capable of working this kind of work in us, but he is the one that's working in us and it works through faith. See, uh, we're, we're through faith be, and here's how faith works. The scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, you, it's not just believing what, you can't just believe what you read. There has to be, a reason you believe it. The things of God, the way I believe it, is the Spirit of God, the anointing. Many times, many preachers have preached and, and while they were preaching that anointed word of God got a hold of my mind and God, the Spirit of God, touched me with the anointed word of God of my hearing. And God solidified that in my mind that I knew that that's God talking. And that's what I need. That's why God anointed it. That's why it was anointed. And that's why God <clears throat> used it to draw me. Jesus said, no man cometh, up, cometh unto me except my father draw him. See, I, I don't even have the ability to come to God if he doesn't draw me to him. Uh, there has to be a way of God dealing with his, his people. You know, you have to be influenced by God some way, through a child of God, through a minister of God, through the word of God. Some way God has to have an influence on your life that he can deal with you. And if you respond to that, then God has a hook. You might just say like fishing, you know, he's got a hook in you and he begins to bring you in. He begins to draw you. And uh, that's how God, that's how God works. And so <clears throat> the Lord, he's working something in our lives that it, it only God could do. You know, uh, somebody was telling me today, reminding me of the scripture where Paul was saying that uh, he was mentioning to the Jews that, you know, the Gentiles, when the Gentiles uh, do what the Jews would do under the law and they do it without the law, they become a law to themselves. Well, that's true. Uh, the whole world is, uh, we've, the whole world has borrowed part of God's righteous principles to operate on. The more righteous principles they have, the better operation they have. It's just like people in business People who are successful in business, if they're not Christians and they're not God's children, they have borrowed or stolen God's principles that causes them to be successful. And so 
that, uh, you know, they're having to keep certain righteous principles, but that don't mean they're righteous. They're just doing, it's, they're doing something out of their own nature that they've learned that will bring success in the natural. Because God has natural laws. There's natural laws of, of uh, there's natural principles that, that you sow, you'll reap from. Uh, God's natural principles of, of righteousness, if you yeah. sow them, they will, you reap something for it. Uh, and so, but that don't make you righteous and that's not gonna make you part of the kingdom of God. Uh, I want, you know, I'm wanting my righteousness to count, not that I borrowed it or stole it from God's, God's family or God's people. I want his righteousness to be my righteousness. I, I want truly to be righteous and know the things of God. Um, so I don't want, I want my sins to be covered and I want righteousness are, uh, to be imputed to me. In fact, I believe that all of us, if you're serving God and living for God in a dedicated, uh, righteous life of, of you're dedicated to serve God and you're doing, uh, you're keeping the righteous commandments you know and, and, and you probably accomplish certain amount of righteousness in, your, in the character of your new man that you don't have to keep anymore. There's things that, God's worked in my life. I don't have to, I'm not being obedient to it. It's just part of me. I've got that conquered. But there's some, there is some things I'm still having to work on. There's continually things that keeps coming up in my life that I begin to realize I didn't really realize that I needed work on that area. So then God starts working on me in those areas. And, um, but he's counted me worthy because of faith because of my faith in him and my servitude to him and my walk of try seeking his ways. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let me go back to Psalms 119 too. It said, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. In other words, my, my heart is I'm seeking God's will in my life. I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be without guile. Who was it? Was it Nathaniel? That, the, that Jesus, when he met him, he said, a man with no guile. Well, I, I like I want the Lord to say that about me. I want to be a man that doesn't have guile or falsehood or, you know, that I'm I'm uh, that I'm true, that I'm true and I'm an honest man. That I, I want that. Yeah, I want I want that kind of uh, reputation, not because I want to be popular with it. I want that because I want that. I want to be that to other men and other. Uh, people of God. So <clears throat> going back to the 32nd chapter now of Psalms, uh, here in fifth verse, he said, I acknowledge, I'm gonna read it again. I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I'll confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest me the iniquity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters thou shalt not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou art, thou shalt preserve me from, uh, from trouble. Thou shalt come past me about with songs of deliverance. See, he's just showing when you're in, when you're going through great troubles, you you uh, you're having a hard time finding God. It takes time when you when you're going through things. It it takes hard. It's hard to take. Uh, 
to find the Lord in whatever it is you're going through. Brother, I was listening to some tapes of Brother Ray Linegar recently, and, and he said this. He said, you can be for sure that whatever you're going through, God's in it. God's not, he's, he's not just, you know, have nothing, you know, he's just not letting you roam around. You're his child, but God, he's aware of what you're going through and, and he's in it in this way. He's either standing back, allowing it to happen. He may not have caused it to happen. God doesn't cause everything to happen. He doesn't say, well, you know, this person here, I think I'll just make them sick. No, no, the chance, the, the book of Ecclesiastes says chance happens to all men. All men has things happen to them and God may not interfere, but he may watch you as you go through things that came by chance. But you can be sure the Lord's there watching. God's rather not the Lord it's, decides to interfere, maybe because of prayer or maybe because uh, it may not take prayer. It may not take prayer for God to get involved in whatever you're going through. It does say, though, in the day of adversity to consider. When we're going through things, we are to consider God. We are to be asking God, God, are you chastising me or is this something natural? Am I just going through this? I sure don't want to go through it. You chastise me and I don't even know it. I want to know. So we are to be considering Let's read a little bit more here. It says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I like that part. God is going to deliver you if you're in trouble and you seek God enough. He will deliver you. I will instruct thee and teach thee in, thy, in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. See, that's, that, that's God's continually working in us and trying to help us directing our lives in the right way to live. God is continually working on us in that way. Be ye not as the horse, or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near, near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall come pass him about. You want God's mercy on your life? Trust in God. Put your trust in God. Don't trust in your own strength. Don't fight in your own strength. But whatever you go through in life, get God involved in it. Exercise your trust. Learn to include God. Learn to ask for his help. Learn to wait on the Lord. Wait on God for an answer. Seek Asking God, asking the Lord to try to, to help you to understand what, what, what's my next step here? What should I do in this situation? What do you want me to do? What's the righteous thing to do? That's uh, learning how to trust in God and put our faith and and you can't put your trace trust in him if you're not seeking what he wants and watching him work in your life. To seek him again, like I said, with your whole heart. Uh, so <clears throat> this is such a marvelous way to serve God, to work, work with God. And I know some of the things I'm saying here today may seem uh, elementary, but it's deeper than elementary. It's higher than that. Uh, we're, we may go through sorrows. Uh, 
You know, right now I'm really praying for Brother John Budd. He's got coronavirus. He's in the hospital, and he's, he's, I don't know if he's completely dodged the bullet yet. I've been very worried about him. In fact, he, he's been very nigh going on the ventilator, which I don't want to see him to do. But right now, they've put him on high flow oxygen and uh, his white blood count is down. It's down some from where it was. They, they did a culture finally of his lungs and found out what bacteria was causing the bacterial pneumonia. And now they've got the right, hopefully the right bacteria antibiotic for that bacteria. But he, he got so sick so fast that he's struggling. He's struggling to breathe. He's, he's had a hard time keeping his oxygen up above up above 90. He's been down in the 80s. He's even down in the high 70s a few times. But uh, he's uh, yesterday and today, his, his oxygen level has stayed up above um, 90, which is good. It's been around 93, 94, 92 to 94. And that's good for really the condition he's in with two kinds of pneumonia, pneumonia from COVID-19 and pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia. But anyway, uh, he's just holding his own right now. And uh, But he's gone through so much sorrow. I mean, he just lost his wife in January. And of course, we knew his his history and the fact that he's still serving God and uh, he's over he's he's overcame some of those sorrows uh, grace it's by grace that he has that's what this says here many sorrows shall be to the wicked but he that trusteth in the Lord mercy shall compass him about and God's mercy has has covered brother Bud and helped him and I'm sure the Lord, I, I have no doubt that God ever knew everything about his situations and what he's had to come through. And the Lord's grace has, has encompassed his life. And I believe it's still, I think he's still, the grace of God's upon him. And I want you to help me pray for him, that God will help him get through this. Anyway, it says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous and shout for joy, all you that are upright in heart. See that word upright. Let me give you some synonyms to it. Upright, righteous, wise, faithful. Um, just. Um, let's see. Just, upright, righteous, faithful, wise, saint, holy. Those, uh, those seven terms are synonymous. And they're synonymous with being just or trust. You know, there's, there's four different categories that we're looking at here to get into the kingdom of God or his, his everlasting kingdom. It first starts off with faith, trusting the Lord, faith. That's how you get in the gate. Is the, We've always taught it's the gate of faith. Faith's how you get in this. You come in through faith, and then you're, you're, if you look at this, if you follow the tabernacle as your steps, you get in the tabernacle through the gate of faith. And then... The late, I mean, then the altar, the brazen altar where you take your sacrifice, that's obedience. So you, it's faith, the principle of faith, the principle of obedience. And then the labor is the principle of the fear of the Lord. To learn to fear God. You see, when you get, the more knowledge you get, the more you will fear God. And that don't, that, that does mean to be afraid of God, his power, his, his awesomeness, to be in awe of him. Not just, not just, to, I'm afraid of his judgment because he's righteous in all the ways. 
and I want to be righteous and I'm afraid of missing God. And if God don't help me, I will miss him. My eyes could be blind to his righteousness, but I'm also, I'm also in awe of him. I'm also respect him. The more you know about God, the more fear or respect or awe or consideration towards God you will have and you'll glorify this great, great God of ours. And when you get into labor, we, labor the labor was a, was a place to wash. The priest would wash himself before he would take the blood of the sacrifice into the holy place. He would wash himself in the labor. And that, that labor was filled with water, but it was lined with women's looking glasses, which was polished brass, which you would look in, you'd see yourself as you washed yourself. That's a picture of the washing of the water of the word of God, that God's helping you cleanse yourself. You know, you, you're you gonna have to wash yourself and make yourself clean. So the principle of faith, the principle of obedience, the principle of the fear of God, and then the next step is honor. You got to learn how you you're, see. You're learning even in the labor in all of this. You're learning how to honor God. But that last step before you go into the holy place, and here's a picture of it: the gate, the brazen altar, the laver, and then the priest had to change garments out of a woolen garment, which represented the flesh, into a white linen garment, which represents righteousness. And that's where you put on, you're clothed with honor. You have learned how not only, you're, you're not only learning how to honor God. See, how can, you, how can you love God whom you have not seen, if you love not? How can you love man whom you have seen if you don't love God whom you've not seen? How's that scripture go? So you, you're going to have to learn how to honor your brother. Love your brother. You don't agree with him. He he rubs you the wrong way. But you're going to have to honor the fact that he's in the way, serving God, trying to locate his way, and, and finding God's way. We're all in this together. We have to learn how to honor the good things in God's children's lives and realize that their faults, just like God covers them, and God uh, doesn't impute, he imputes righteousness. He doesn't impute iniquity. See, God's not, he's not, he's counting you righteous right now until you actually really become righteous. And he does that by the work that Christ did when he was here on this earth and, and he finished that work on the cross. He finished the work. See, he came to finish the work that God sent him to do. And that finished work in Christ is what, that's God counts us worthy by the grace and mercy through Jesus Christ were counted worthy. until we, uh, actually until God accomplishes in us what he's working on. So be glad, it says, in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you that are upright in the heart. Now upright, for you to be upright, it means for you to be just by faith. In other words, we're justified by faith. That's what makes you just. So it makes you justify it. Your faith in God that I believe you're leading me. I believe you're working your righteousness in my life and I'm serving you. And when you correct me, I will be corrected. Just like this scripture said, you know, uh, day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me and my moisture 
is turned into drought of, of summer. <laughs> That's what drives you to a place to acknowledge your sin and your iniquity. You don't hide. You open up and say, God, I see what you're working on in my life. I repent of it. And you see, when God really works it, listen to this scripture. Uh, I almost slipped it from my mind here. Talking about sin, godly sin. Godly sorrow worketh repentance that need not be repented of. See, godly sorrow, when God really deals with you, when God takes you through stirring your mind and causing you to wrestle within yourself because God's showing you something about you to correct your things in your life, when God takes you through that, it will bring godly sorrow. You'll finally really see what God's showing you about yourself that needs corrected. And until you really see it, you really won't know how much it needs corrected. But when God manifests that to you, that godly sorrow will work repentance, true repentance. And remember, repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry, Lord. It's turning and going the other way. It helps you to realize what I said a minute ago about Brother Brown's talk at the campground to repent for our father's iniquity, our forefathers' sins, that didn't work righteousness in us. You know what it did? It made us stop and beware and begin to consider that we are bearing iniquity. We're bearing things that was planted in us long ago that needs corrected and we're going to have to change from them and we're going to have to recognize it and ask God in the awareness of stopping and beginning to repent, it brought an awareness in us that we needed to change from the things that our forefathers did that, that maybe during that day, God may have winked at, but today he's requiring it and we've got to, we get, we've got to make changes. See, and that, that's where we're at in God. God, he's counting us righteous until he says, now here's something I want you to check. I want to work in your life. I want to correct this. It's part of God's judgment. And for God to work that in your life and begin to change you. And when you really see it, you, you it'll work repentance that you don't need to repent of anymore. You see it. You know it's there. It may take you time to accomplish what God's trying to correct you. And it will in most cases. Because it may be formed in you. It may be deeply rooted in you. It may take some time, but God will help you get it out. God will help you get your mind renewed in that area where your, bot, your, your Adamic nature has no vehicle anymore to operate with that certain behavior. Anyway, I hope you're following what I'm saying. I'm, I realize that it's sort of it's sort of spiritual psychology in a way. I realize that. Forgive me for my informal dress tonight, but I just, I was running late and I had to hurry to get in here and get started. I love the work of God. I love this God. I love this God that I serve. My, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his son. I love this work that's working in me. I pray for you. Thank you for giving me your attention tonight and let me talk share my heart with you I'm just bearing my heart I hope I've said something that would be somewhat beneficial to you I love the people of God um, by the way after we gather these principles these four principles of faith obedience fear of God and honor the next step is charity. That's the love of God. God is going to work his love in us to where his character of righteousness is pure. The pure love of God. My Lord, can you imagine an old sinner like me that God will work on me? I was just an old chunk of coal, but 
I still hope to be a diamond someday. <laughs> I know that's a song, but there's a certain amount of truth to it. I long to be there. God bless your hearts. I love all of you. Those of you from uh, First Gospel Church here local, appreciate those from the Dominican Republic that are on here, and each uh, others that just tune in and share this time together with us, Brother Fide in Guatemala. We appreciate you. He wants us to keep Guatemala in, their, in the prayers. Pray for the Dominican Republic. Pray for Brother Rudy and Igwe over in the Dominican. He has a need right now. We're trying to uh, find God's answer to how to meet that need. Uh, Brother Zachariah, Zachariah Mateo, he's online with us from the Dominican Republic. Also, so many of you, I appreciate you all here. Uh, Brother Elias Cipriano, I saw him on earlier. I'm sure he's still on there. They, Some of them can't understand everything I'm saying, but they, they get on there and get what they can get out of it. I have uh, Zoom meetings with the Dominican brothers on Monday nights. Brother, also Brother Fidel. See, Brother Fide, your your name that's on there right now is spelled F-I-D-E, Fide. It don't have an L where it's Fidel, like you told me. Anyway, that's why I called you Fide, because of that spelling. Anyway, um, uh, pray for Guatemala, the Dominican Republic. Pray for Brother Johnny Bud. His, his, his need is urgent right now. And... Uh, then uh, pray for me. I uh, I want to be more in God's will than I ever have been in my life. I want to be, you know, I'm getting up in age. I'm 71 years old. You know, I just turned 71 and I'm just uh, at that turning point and I want my life, the remainder of my life, I want to be able to help the body of Christ and I want to do the will of God. And... Uh, so I'm trying to get something situated in my life where I can be more effective for God, my, give my ministry a greater, a greater emphasis or place than maybe I have in the past. Anyway, God bless you all. Pray for this ministry, the precious people of God. I was going to say the people from Little Rock, well, of course, we will have church Sunday morning. Uh, continental breakfast in the dining room at 9 30 10 o'clock bible study 11 30 regular service worship service upstairs in the sanctuary we are going to have men those of you men who can work tomorrow we've got a few men i'm uh, not tomorrow but saturday uh, we got some men that are going to work work saturday uh those of you that can come and work for a couple Two or three hours, we sure would appreciate having your help. There's several things really needs to be done there, so we're just trying to catch up. Also, those of you from um, in the Little Rock Church, I will tell you we did get overhead projector uh, purchased and should be overnighted to us, and hopefully it'll be here tomorrow early enough that maybe Brother Painter may be able to start installation tomorrow night told me so i'm looking forward to that because our projectors uh, you know especially those you saints in the sanctuary are looking up at on the platform is just not adequate and we know that but we purchased them they've been on back order we finally have canceled those orders and found them in stock and are having them overnighted here so hopefully this weekend maybe we might have one anyway up and going i hope so <laughs> All right, I see your uh, people, you know, sending up hearts and and uh, waves and all they like that. Anyway, God bless your hearts. I love all of you. I'll see you Sunday morning, those of you from here local. Those of you in the Dominican, I'll see you on Zoom Monday night. And um, then the rest of you, I guess I'll see you next Thursday. God bless you. Love you. Have a good evening and the rest of the week. The Lord keep you, lead you, and guide you in his ways. Good night.